course, um, essay by Langston Hughes, uh, published in 1926. So. We've come right. some time since then, so it's not right. exactly applicable, but I went back and looked at it today and I was mm -hmm. thinking, of course it begins, one of the most promising of the young Negro poets said to me once, I want to be a poet, not right. a Negro poet. Right. Meaning, I believe, I want to write like a white poet, meaning subconsciously, I would like to be a white poet, mm -hmm. meaning behind that, I would like to be white. And I was sorry the young man said that, for no great poet has ever been afraid of being himself. And then he goes on, of course, to, to make this call to black artists about mm -hmm. to be authentic and to explore the, 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 the black experience and all this beauty. Right. And, and it gets to this other question about um, universi universality, right? right? This idea of once you've been bestowed with universality. And I always bristle when someone says, oh, your work is so universal. Right. Because what that means is, yeah, well, I mean, what do you Yeah, what well, universal means to write something for everyone is to write something for nothing, for no one. Right. As far as I'm concerned. Right, I mean, that's right. what I say to my students. Like, universal, there is no, there's really no people. There's just like persons that you sort of interact with more than this general right. public or this universal sort of agreement about what's, what's good. Because that's right. so stripped down that it doesn't, you know, it's like water. It's right. Like, well, it's just, it tastes the same to everybody, but it, there's no ingredients for it. Right. You know. So who do you write your poets for? And don't say yourself, okay? Because right, right, that's yeah, what everybody yeah, says. You yeah, can put yeah, that yeah. aside, but putting right. that aside, and I don't mean necessarily groups of people. Mm -hmm. The other question I wondered is, do poets write mostly for other poets? Right. So, I mean, there's two answers in there. The one answer is, I do think, uh, I don't think about, like, sort of popularity as a writer. And I think this is true for, I mean, beyond, like, sort of Will Smith or, or Britney Spears. In all arenas, in particular in art, there are there's just subgroups and there's mm -hmm. sub audiences and there's stars within those groups who aren't stars, just one, one step outside of the circle. Right, right. So I think that poetry is like that. So that you know, I was on CNN uh, last week and the interviewer said, "Well, what do we have to do to get poetry more to make it more popular? <coughs> like it's always at the fringes and it seems like this elitist thing." And I said, "Well, for me, poetry is popular. I mean, when I go out, people like I look at the audience and right, I say, well, right. people are coming out, and the people that aren't there, I don't see them. So I'm not really thinking about right. that sort right, of right. visible person. So for me, that's not one of my questions about like how to make it a popular thing. And even like I've, I've gotten this too, even being on CNN, like people think, oh yeah, like you're perfect. Uh, you make you give poetry a different image because hmm. you know you're tall and you have these other experiences. So we're gonna." show people how, what poetry really is. And I sort of think, well, what but is, if they read my does poems, that mean? you know, oh, you're good looking. And oh, people okay. think poets are nerds. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And, <laughs> so you know, you're, you're not like you're drooling. Kind of, and yeah, 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 <laughs> you're not introverted. But I think that what, well, when you look at the poems, you sort of figure that, no, actually, we can't really bring this guy out because the poems are strange and they don't necessarily sort of conform, conform to whatever it is that people think a poet like me or right, a poet like anyone right. else would do. And so I think that goes back to the question. I mean, I don't, I think of myself as someone who does uh, have an interest across the board in terms of what kinds of aesthetics that I want to pick up. I want to do them all. Right. So if that means, I mean, I think that makes, that means that I'm complicated more than a person who sort of ascribes to one particular aesthetic. Right. You know? I mean, I think that's just the moment that we're in. You know, right. we, are, we are in a moment where we can just do everything. We can be influenced by everything and then project everything. So, so Well, certainly sense. this collection, which is I, you know, I, I feel like I don't have to say it. It won the National Book Award, but I liked it too. Right, so, yeah. okay, so, um, which is just brilliant and beautiful and moving. Um, certainly, it it does touch on all kinds of things. Sure. Music. I mean, you reference Luther Vandross, right, which I right, love. Right, yeah. A house is not a home, and um, and then the 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 I can't even pronounce that. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it. You know where I was going. So it is it is the aesthetic. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Terrence is also a visual artist. And he, this is your work, right? right? That's right. So, do your own cover. I mean, do we hate him yet? Yes, we do. <laughs> um, um, but I, so I have several things going, and I am going to get to audience questions. I'm not going to dominate the conversation, but um, well, actually, I am going to dominate the conversation, but I'm still going to get to audience questions. But um, one thing you said about what a poet like you would look like, and I, right. I wonder leads to another question I had about. If there is there is some poetry that's popular, sure, sure, deaf poetry. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you? And I always wonder what real poets. Right. I, don't, I hesitate to use that. Like, think about that. Like about about that aspect of poet. I was at. Um, I have a friend who likes going to mm -hmm. poetry slams and poetry jams, and she's right. always trying to get me to go. And I'm like, right. quite honestly, I'd rather chew bricks. Right, uh, right. Um, because, you know, the, the the it's not that the work is not good. It's that the 
the delivery is yeah. so so you can almost predict what they're going yeah, to yeah. say. Yeah. The bad know, versions the bad of it. Version of it. Yeah. That's true. But I mean, I think if you sort of change the genre or change the art form, it would be like saying, um, why aren't rappers doing what I mean, Stanley Clark is doing? Or mm -hmm. if I do movies, why you know you like Charles Burnett, but you don't like Tyler Perry? And I think well, there's room for well, both. I do like Charles so Burnett. Different. Not Tyler Perry. Well, it's just a different <laughs> sort of. Uh, different point on the spectrum. Right. So I think like we, we're looking for something different when we go to spoken word. So I don't go to spoken word poetry and I expect to hear Robert Hayden, Gwen Brooks, or Komenyaka. I expect right. them to do that version. And all I ask is that they not be doing, say what the last poets were doing in 1971, or what Gil Scott Heron was doing, because I like Gil Scott Heron, mm -hmm. but I don't need anybody else to right. replicate that. So it's like there's But many a, of them are, right? That's right, that's, that's, that's right. But that's true for poetry. When you pick up you know, any literary journal, other than plowshares, of course. <laughs> you find, well, actually, the reason you don't find it in plowshares is because there's always a different editor. But in a typical literary journal, where there is <laughs> sort of the same people looking at the same poems and putting them in the same journal, you find a kind of flatness. And occasionally, mm -hmm. you find something exceptional. But it's really hard. And so in any genre, you're going to find people that are just sort of going through the motions, the way that those people are going through the motions on the stage, okay. and then you just wait for that moment, like when you flip through it, just a typical When you really journal. get something. Yeah, okay. and you're like, oh, here's something good, but everybody else is just, they just look like poems, but right. they're not really breaking Exactly, down, exactly. Well, there's so much of that. Well, that's, you know, thank you for, okay, I'll go then. Because right. I think well, you just hope for it. I mean, yeah. it's, but it's hard to find good art. It I mean, is. again, yeah. if you use the movie and the music analogy, like we know there's so much bad art in the world, you're excited to find the good stuff, but it's rare. So right. the mistake would be to assume that there is no good spoken word Poet. When That's in fact, a good you know, point. You could find, you could find something. Even like, I mean, I like <coughs> Saul Williams, and again, he's uneven. But when he hits it, he's a poet that completely changes that genre. He sort of, right. you, you have a different sense of what that genre is. Even though now he's a rock star, I guess. But right. So I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, I think you, you just true. wait for those moments when you find a good example of the, of the form. That's a very good point. I think, I think my one of my concerns was that uh, I also went. Um, recently, actually, here at Emerson. Emerson, for those of you who don't know, sponsors every year um, this event called Poetically Speaking, right. um, which is sponsored by this. There's a there's a magazine run by uh, young women in the Boston Public Schools called Teen Voices, which is great. It encourages young women to find their voice. Right. And so every year they have a poetry slam called mm -hmm. Poetry Speaking, Poetically Speaking. So I went to that, um, and they were wonderful. I mean, these girls are just just uh, awesome. I mean, these are all girls from Boston Public Schools. Most of them are, you know. Uh, not from the suburbs, um, and and their 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 passion and their their voice and all of that was on display. But they were all doing uh, what I what I wondered is if they would get a chance. It's not that I didn't I mind the spoken word, but I wondered right. if they would if they think of that as the only form of poetry, right, right. you know. And I, so yeah. I worry for especially for children of color, mm -hmm. young people of color, young coming up poets of color. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah. Can we get them to see both? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I mean the exciting thing about what I do is that I'm. You know, I've been, I've taught poetry in prisons and I've taught it in homeless shelters, but I've also taught it like at a, a, pla a class where the average age was like 70 in these places like, uh, I shouldn't say the name of these places, but these sort of old school liberal places where like, you know, elderly people go to be creative over the summer. Right, you know, I've been right. in those spaces too. Right. And it's the same thing, like you sit in that space and you want to let them listen to public enemy. And I mean these 80 year old white people are who I'm talking about. Right. Like, oh yeah, I'll listen to some Chuck D and see what yeah. they think. <laughs> so, and then, you know, because they come in thinking like poems can only be about trees right. or right. landscapes because they've read, you know, Mary Oliver, who's a great poet, but they too have a sort of narrow right. sense of what the genre can do. So it is the same for younger, you know, urban kids or whatever who have also a narrow sense. So if you go to them and you say, oh, let's listen to some Robert Frost and right. see if we can like make him do what we want him to do. How can we shape this Form. So, like, in particular with the elderly group, I had them listening to uh, this poet, Tracy Morris, mm -hmm. who people call sort of a sound poet. So she does these really interesting sort of verbal things and mm -hmm. noises. Uh, so she had a poem like, uh, it's just, that's the sound of the man working on a chain gang. So it's Sam Cooke, but she just says it for like two minutes. And she's, wow. by the time, that, you know, by the time she's done, she's completely transformed it because you're like, that's sad. Like, I thought that was a good tune. But she's like, that's the sound of the man. You know, she just, right. and it's a poem. I mean, it's just a, a sound poem. So I thought, look, well, I get these 80 year old people to like do sound poems. So, and then it's completely like cathartic for them to be right. in this space and to try to write these sound poems where they, they think poems are fairly narrative, uh, contextual, straight ahead poems. Right. So so it's that. I mean, and, and then you have kids that think that all the poems have to rhyme. They've only heard hip hop. Exactly. And you're saying to them, no, let's see if you can like 
write a poem like uh, like Robert Frost and right. have it sort of be blank verse and not totally reliant on like the sort of full rhyme that we get right. in, in hip hop. So that's my job. It's just sort of subverting what I think people's expectations are uh, when they show up, when they show up in the audience or when they show up in the classroom. Great. All right. Excellent.